Yeah, I'm going to talk about deduction, about deductive reasoning. And both of them are actually, uh, since the early days of artificial intelligence, really the main components uh, of AI and uh, in general of automated reasoning. So this uh, bridges nicely the first talk and this last talk. But more precisely, so it's a LIT uh, project and uh, um, it's called Log Logic Technology for Education. Actually, the really spelled out title is uh, logic uh, technologies for teaching in computer science. This is the main idea. We just started two weeks ago. And this is uh, myself, Armin Biere, and then Martina Seidel is here in the audience, and uh, Wolfgang Schreiner and Wolfgang Windsteiger. So they're both from the Mathematics uh, Risk Institute, and we're from computer science. So this is also an interdisciplinary project. We also started to collaborate with the Linz School of Education, particularly with Barbara Sabitzer and uh, Markus Hohenwarter on this. Okay, so, so you hear the title, Logic Technology for Computer Science Education. Uh, that's uh, kind of a recursive, recursive thing, right? And it's, uh, I have to assume that kind of, uh, maybe some of you know about logic, well, maybe less about computer science, and then didactics on top of that, that's really challenging. So, so let me try to focus on the kind of most important thing for us uh, to teach you logic, how we understand logic in computer science. Maybe this is the, the best thing here. And then at the end, I'll talk about what our ideas are about teaching that. Okay. So let's do some logic. Let's try to encode uh, what the problem I had this morning at 7 a.m. I, I thought like what should I wear today and of course because uh, I'm working in this field I used uh, SAT Silver to solve this. Uh, so the so first task uh, in this talk is now to encode this problem I had this mor morning at 7 a.m. into a logic problem. So let's see. Um, so these are just uh, three constraints, right? Uh, English. Uh, like one, uh, you cannot wear a tie without a shirt. It was look silly, right? Wearing a tie without a shirt. Then um, wearing a tie uh, and a shirt is overkill. I mean, this definitely applies to our uh, computer scientists in this room, right? Then not wearing a tie nor a shirt is impolite. That's because maybe I'm over uh, 50 and that also applies to Gerhard, so let's see. All right, so let's see what, uh, what this gives. In logic, you would say a tie implies shirt. So the idea is that tie and shirt are kind of uh, facts. They are either true or false. Propositional variables, we call them. And they're like uh, um, tie implies shirt. So if tie is true, shirt has to be true. The next one reads, um, it not the case. So this exclamation mark is not. The tie and shirt are true at the same time. OK? Maybe a second to see that. This is exactly what my English says. And then the last one, uh, this is the tie in shirt. Like one of them has to be there. Um, now, if I do a little bit of logic, that's what we teach our students, I will come up with this um, uh, formula there at the bottom. This is a formula in normal form. Uh, it's called conjunctive normal form. And I don't want to explain how you get from the top to the bottom. But this one on the bottom, you can really give like a tool. And the tool would give you a solution if, it's, if there is one. So big question, is there a solution? Is it satisfiable? Yeah, sure, I'm not naked and Gerhard is neither. So we're uh, wearing no tie and the shirt. So that's exactly the solution here and that's exactly the only solution. And usually in class I would continue explaining why it's the only solution, but I'm not doing it here. So this is the most simple way of doing logic. Uh, it's proposition logic and we're teaching this in first semester in computer science. It's actually one of the most important things we have. Uh, so, so actually this problem looks extremely simple, but it's not. So you actually for the, this first line here explains the number of solutions I would need to test. Okay, because I have two variables, I have two to the power two uh, possible solutions. If I go to three variables, I have eight. Then I get, if I get 10 variables, it's already roughly 1,000, 1,024 actually. So we would call it kilo in computer science jargon. Then we have 20 variables, we go to mega. If we have 30 variables, we do giga. 40 variables, tera, right? But, well, that's still small, right? So like something with uh, 40 variables, you can easily fit on this slide. So I didn't do this, but you could imagine. But in reality, we're doing much more. So we're doing 100 variables or maybe 1,000 variables. So 1,000 variables I picked because that's 
interesting. So um, let's assume we, we would want to build a tool which goes through all these uh, two to the power thousand solutions and consider that the universe has 10 to the power 80 atoms. And then uh, let's assume every atom can like check one solution in one picoseconds, 10 to the power minus 12. Then there's still enough left that like we would need actually 2 to the power 200 years to have the whole universe check every solution, right? So we need clever algorithms for doing this. This is not going to work like that. But actually what we do in practice and uh, like if you have some um, smartphones in, in your pocket with ARM chips, that's what they're doing. They're checking really huge systems with this kind of technology, like with a million variables. And uh, therefore you need like uh, uh, specific algorithms and we're doing that actually, we're, we're world class in that, but I'm not talking about that here. I want to move on, that was my promise, to figure out what's the best on university. And let's consider for instance these three, right? Like one is MIT, then LIT and KIT, so the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, Linz Institute of Technology, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. But for some reason we only know these two facts here on top, uh, maybe learned inductively by asking people. Okay? Uh, so we, write, we know that the MIT is not as good as LIT, why? Well, they have an M in it, which means, uh, beside Massachusetts, it means math. So we also have math, but they don't have as much logic. So we have an L in it, which is Linz, but also logic. And that's why we're better. Uh, and, and then there's like, uh, everybody knows that the KIT is not as good as the MIT. Okay, so th these, these are the two facts we have. Uh, and now let's try to fig figure out what's the top university. And if you have a computer science background, you would use a sorting algorithm for doing that. You would sort these three universities, A, B, C. So I start here with a lexicographic order. And then I sort them uh, with an algorithm. So this is an algorithm or a program if you want. And this is the famous old 60-year-old uh, bubble sort. It works as follows. So if it just have some checking of columns, like entries in columns, for instance, here it checks whether this kit here is less than this lit. Uh, and if we, we look here now at our facts, you see no fact which says that kit is less than lit, LIT, KIT is less than LIT. And therefore, uh, this exchange doesn't happen. That's how this program works. And then you do this twice more. So here, for instance, you check whether the LIT is less than MIT, and we don't have a fact here which says LIT is less than MIT, and therefore we don't exchange it. So what happens, we, we keep this um, lexicographic order, and then the algorithm here returns the last element in them. Well, it gives MIT, so we're not best, okay? Maybe that's what, what's uh, the reality, but that's not what, what we expect given these facts. So what's the uh, problem here? Well, the problem is very simple, that the, our inductive database on top uh, is not complete. So actually, and we'll later go uh, uh, check this again, what we need is um, a condition, a logical property about our data, fact, uh, data set, which is not true here. And the property we have that is, uh, it's closed transitively. And if you look at this data set, you will see that, well, uh, MIT is less than LIT, and the KIT is less than MIT, so KIT also has to be less than LIT, right? So, so, so that's something we could deduce and add to this database. If we do that, we get the following run. So this is now the second run with a fixed data set, okay? And to just reiterate this point, uh, here suddenly we have to sw uh, swap these two elements because now uh, we know that uh, KIT is less than LIT, right? Because we have this fact here. And therefore we have to swap them. So here they exchange these two. And then in the next uh, iteration here, we see that KIT is less than MIT and therefore uh, B is less than C. We have to exchange B and C. So these two guys are, are swapped. Uh, then in this last row, nothing happens. And then uh, at the end, oh my, we got KIT. So something is wrong, right? This, this can't be, this is totally wrong. Does anybody see the, the reason the computer scientists should, should see this immediately? And not my, my, my copy eyes because they know the slides. Well, this sorts in the wrong direction. Actually, you see like already that this is sorted in the right way, but you have to return the first, of course, the column A. And uh, if you do this now, then of course we get our answer that LIT is the best. Uh, 
Okay, so what does this teach us? Well, uh, in computer science, if you want to build big systems, uh, one of the most important um, things you learn is abstraction, or you could also phrase it as contracts. So, so you take components, and these components have uh, contracts, which usually means, okay, uh, this component assumes something about like something else, about some other component, and then it guarantees something at the, the output. And in our particular uh, example here, the assumption was that less is a total order. It's uh, linearly ordered, which was not the case for the first bug. Uh, and then uh, this bubble sort routine should guarantee that it's or sorted. Actually, it's sorted, but it's sorted in the wrong way, right? So the guarantee was kind of used by the top university function in the wrong way. Uh, and this was the second bug we had. Now, if we fix this, then at the end we get the right um, answer. Now, um, my claim is that for computer science in general, and in particular for our students, but maybe uh, beyond that to, um, uh, to the whole society, this idea of specifying assumptions and guarantees in, in logic and uh, doing precise reasoning and also being able to, to understand this is, is very important. It's part of computational thinking and we need to teach these uh, to students. So this slide um, kind of is um, a blueprint for what we want to do. So in, in principle, we want to support teachers and, and students to learn better and um, also to uh, have individualized learning. And the way we want to do it, we're also going to come up with models, but we're going to up, uh, come up with logical, uh, precise models. And these models describe, for instance, uh, sorting or something. And then um, we have a logical reasoning engine which would produce exercises for the student. And the student can then uh, solve this and hand it back to the logical reasoning engine. And this logical reasoning engine might uh, find, oh, this is a correct exercise or not. And even give back a diagnosis, like feedback, uh, what was wrong. And uh, then the student can improve his understanding of, of uh, for instance, sorting algorithms. Uh, we want to also add machine learning here, uh, in particular in order to, to adapt uh, kind of the um, generation of exercises uh, to the, the student's skills, because we don't think we have a precise model for that one. And ultimately our students, maybe in later semesters, should also have uh, this blue dashed line be able to, to fill this blue dashed line on top, which says, okay, so uh, as a computer scientist, you should, not, should only be able to, to think about sorting. No, you might, be, might want to also understand how to come up with these models for sorting in the first place. And that will be a connection uh, to that too. Um, this is our LockTech EDU project, and we start here, this is the idea at the bachelor level at the university in computer science, but we want to move towards other topics, in particular mathematics and engineering, um, then also master and PhD level and also in particular down to secondary and primary school. Actually, Martina has here very good experiences uh, with um, teaching logic even to kindergarten ki uh, kids because um, maybe that's even simpler than teaching them programming. Thank you for your attention.